Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at net data. Net data is something that I've had a chance to roll out internally. And since I've just gone through that process, I figured I would create a video for you guys to show you how to set it up. If you haven't already heard of it, net data is a monitoring solution that will give you an overview of your server's key metrics. Metrics such as CPU utilization, memory usage, disk IO, network traffic, and even the performance of individual applications. It provides all of that information and more in an interface that's modern, appealing, and easy to understand. After you set it up in your server, if any of its metrics are trending in a negative way or is already showing contention, it will alert you. You can even set up your own alerts and notification for any metric that deviates from normal expected behavior. This can help administrators become more proactive rather than reactive. And best of all, NetData is free with no account required at all in order to use it. But is it trustworthy? Well, the NetData agent is 100% open source with its code right there out in the public on GitHub, so that way you could check out its code and decide for yourself. Anyway, considering I've rolled out NetData internally, I've reached out to NetData to see if they want to help out with this video, and they were able to provide me with some very useful information that I'm going to pass on to you guys as we go through the solution. Anyway, like I mentioned earlier, I made the decision to roll out NetData internally, and my reason for doing that was because I wanted to get a closer look at resource trends, which is one of the many things that NetData allows you to do. And the way this video in particular will be structured is I'll first go over what NetData is and the goal that it tries to solve. I'll then show you how to set it up. And by the end of the video, I'll also show you the cloud version as well, which gives you additional benefit. That way you can make a more informed decision as far as whether or not this particular solution is right for you. Now, before we get started though, I need to give you guys a quick disclaimer. This video is actually sponsored by NetData, but it's not a review. I will not be giving you my overall opinion about NetData in this video. Instead, what I'll do is give you my overall opinion as well as the pros and cons of NetData in a completely separate non-sponsored video. This one in particular is going to be a tutorial and a tutorial only. It's for those of you that have already made the decision to roll out net data. I'm not going to convince you to do that. So if you've already made the decision to roll out net data, then this is the video for you. If you're not sure whether or not net data is the solution for you, then what I recommend you do is watch the review video that I've already uploaded and I'll leave a card for that video right about here. And in this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to get started with net data. And in the next section, I'm going to start with a fully installed net data so you can see what it looks like if you haven't already seen the review. And then from there, we're going to work on installing net data. It's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get started. And here it is in all its glory. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a fresh net data installation on my footage PC. After installation, I was able to reach net data by using localhost along with port 19999. And by having it installed, it gives me this dashboard right here that I can view anytime I want to get a look at how this particular computer is doing. As you can see, I'm able to view stats on the server's CPU, memory, storage, I.O., and more. And everything you're seeing here is default. I didn't add or configure anything off camera. All I did was run NetData's Kickstart script, which is how you go about installing it. Now I'll show you that process later on, but for now, let's continue looking at the NetData installation that I have right here. Anyway, as you can see, we have the default meters here on the screen, which already gives us a great deal of information about the most important resources on this particular computer. We can see how the server is keeping up with load, how much storage is free, how the storage volume is keeping up with reads and writes, memory usage, network inbound and outbound, and more. If you scroll down, you can find some additional metrics, and some of them are the same as the meters we have above, but there's more information. On these, I can mouse over any of the metrics at any time to get more specific information. As you can see, if I zoom in here, I have a little dot that shows me where I'm pointing when it comes to my mouse cursor. And that helps me understand exactly where this particular metric was at any particular point of time. And here on the right hand side, we have a menu and we could use this menu to jump to a specific metric quickly. So for example, if I wanted to view information regarding applications, I can click on that right here and that jumps me right down to that particular section. Now I haven't actually installed any applications on this particular computer other than what I use for recording. This is my recording PC right here. 
But again, we can get a great deal of information through net data, and I just installed this right before I click the record button. Now, something else that I would like to point out is if you scroll right here all the way down to the bottom, we have a link that goes directly to the GitHub repository for the NetData agent. So if I click on that, it opens up a new tab, and here we have the actual source code. So if you're curious about anything regarding the source code, you could definitely check this out. So feel free to click on anything right here and browse the source and become more familiar with the source code if that's something that you want to do. But for now, let's go back to the NetData installation here on my recording PC, as there's some additional things that I'd like to show you. Now on the top of the screen right here, we have several different categories that are specific to the cloud version of NetData. And this is something that I'll be covering later on. But anyway, what you're seeing right now is NetData in action, and there's a lot more to see. But what I'll do right now is go over some of the ways in which NetData is different when compared to other monitoring solutions. First, the NetData agent is open source and available for free. As you'll see in the next section, while I walk you through the process of installing it, you won't see me sign up for anything or register for an account. And this isn't one of those situations where I do that off camera. There's no sign up process at all for this application unless you opt in for the optional cloud component. Even then, believe it or not, it's still free. In addition, all the core monitoring features are free to use without cost or limitation. If you want to get some coding practice or contribute to an awesome project, then you can definitely do that. Anyway, continuing, another feature that's worth knowing about is that NetData operates in real time with high fidelity. High fidelity monitoring means collecting and visualizing thousands of metrics per second, and it does this without adding latency or causing resource contention in and of itself. It's constantly providing information about what your servers are up to. Another feature that I'll mention is the fact that NetData is a zero configuration and automatic discovery monitoring solution. This is why you'll see different metrics being monitored on each server. It knows what to monitor rather than forcing you to tell it what to do. That could be a tedious thing to set up manually. And I'll show you an example of this with NetData running on different types of servers here very shortly. When it comes to privacy, the data that NetData collects is stored locally on each of your servers and not on NetData servers. If you use the cloud version of NetData, then the metrics do pass through their system, but aren't actually stored there. Instead, only the email address that you use to sign up with is what becomes stored on their servers. Continuing, NetData is also able to detect anomalies or anything abnormal that may occur. In the background, NetData is using machine learning to detect these abnormalities, so it not only knows what your server's baseline is, it's well aware if something deviates from that baseline. This is done without any configuration or human intervention at all. Now, for those of you administrators that are more seasoned than others, you've probably spent some time tweaking monitoring solutions, and you probably also know that it's not all that fun to do. In fact, it's downright tedious. And Nagios immediately comes to mind here. That's a solution where you have to manually create service check files, host files, and things like that. And that could get very time consuming, so again, with NetData, you don't have to worry about that because it catalogs your server and knows what to monitor. And without having to manually create these check files, that enables you to become, well, more proactive. And when it comes to monitoring, it's always a great idea to be more proactive rather than reactive. Now I'm going to show off even more about NetData as we go through this video, but what I wanna do right now is take a quick detour into the installation section of this video that way, for the remainder of the video after that, everything can be more hands-on. So join me in the next section and we'll install NetData. In this section, we're going to install NetData. We will be looking at more of NetData's features in this video, but I wanted to take a detour to install it right now so that way the remainder of this video can be more hands-on. So feel free to follow along with me from here on out. In order to start using NetData, the minimum component that you'll need no matter what is the NetData agent. This is the open source component I was referring to earlier and provides the majority of NetData's features. There's no cost or sign up in order to use it. All we have to do is run their kickstart script. When you do that, the NetData agent is installed and it's ready to go. To set it up, there's a one line command that you can use to get NetData installed very quickly. And I'm going to paste it onto the screen right now. So basically this command right here is going to download the NetData kickstart script and it's going to temporarily store that in the temp directory. 
As an aside, I always recommend that you make sure to investigate every shell script that you run on your server. Don't just blindly accept anything that you find online. It's a very good practice to take a look at these files and go ahead and audit these. Now, of course, I've already done that before I hit the record button. I'll leave that up to you. But anyway, back to this command. What this is doing, like I mentioned, is it's downloading the NetData Kickstart script, it's storing it in the temp directory, and then from there, it's going to go ahead and run it. So when I press enter, the process will start immediately. So I'll do that right now. Now, depending on your distribution, there might be a number of prompts that'll come up. For example, if there's any repositories that NetData uses that you don't already have on your system, it's going to ask your permission before those get set up. So what you'll do is just answer yes to any of the prompts that come up here, and that'll make sure that NetData has everything that it needs. And once you do that, it's going to proceed and install. Once the script runs, NetData may or may not be already running on your server. You can run systemctl status NetData to find out. It might have a status of running, and if it does, well, it's running. You'll also want to take a look at whether or not the service is enabled. Enabled meaning it's going to start at boot time. On the footage PC right here, NetData was not started automatically, but it was enabled. But that doesn't really matter. To start it up, all we have to do is run sudo systemctl start and then NetData, just like this. To access NetData, if NetData is installed locally on your server, then what you could do is access localhost at port 19999, and that'll get you right to the dashboard. On your side, you might want to create a firewall to disallow the general public from accessing NetData. Unless you want everyone to know about your server's health, I recommend that you put that behind a firewall, but I'll leave that up to you. And the way this works is that every server that you install NetData onto will have a dashboard just like this one. When it comes to the cloud version, we will be able to see all of our servers from one single dashboard, but we'll get to that later. With the default installation, you'll have access to metrics like you see right here. All you have to do is remember port 19999, put that port behind a firewall, and well, you have a monitoring solution. It's that easy. Depending on the use case for a server you install NetData onto, it will dynamically monitor any related service you may have installed. For example, if you install MySQL, then you could view metrics around that particular service. The same goes for Apache, Nginx, and so on. This is a feature known as Auto Discover within NetData, and we'll take a look at that in the next section. So let's take a look at an example of the Auto Discovery feature within NetData. On the screen right now is the same server we were just looking at, which is just a standard Linux server, or more specifically, my recording PC. So when it comes to this particular instance, it's not all that unique. So let's take a look at the NetData dashboard from another server. So I'll open up another tab. And then in my case, I'll just navigate to one of my local servers. You don't have to follow along with this. This is just an example. But what we'll do is take a quick look at my Kubernetes controller. So I'll just type its address right here. And then I'll type a colon. And then again, port 19999. Let's see what happens. And take a look at that. What we're seeing right here is the NetData dashboard on my Kubernetes host. Now you could see a pop-up just like this one that's letting you know that you can set up NetData Cloud, which is something we'll go over later. So right now, I'm just going to click this button right here to dismiss this message, and we'll continue taking a look at NetData through this Kubernetes controller. As I mentioned, this particular section here is going to show you the auto discovery feature within NetData. If I go to the right hand side here and take a look at the various different things that I can click on if I wanted to go to a specific section, you'll notice that I have several Kubernetes specific metrics right here. If I go back to the footage PC, what you'll notice is that none of those Kubernetes sections that were in this menu on the other server are present here. And the reason why that's the case is because of auto discovery. We're not going to see Kubernetes metrics on this particular server because, well, Kubernetes is not installed on my footage PC. Instead, I have Kubernetes installed right here. So that's why I have Kubernetes sections within the menu that are present here, but are not present on this particular instance. Again, that's auto discovery. Once you install NetData, it catalogs the system that it's installed on and adjusts itself to make sure that it's monitoring things that you have installed. 
And it's also making sure that it's not monitoring things you don't have installed because, well, that would be a waste of CPU cycles. Let's see another example. I'll open yet another tab right here. And let's take a look at one of my Proxmox nodes. And that one is located right here at pve1.home-network.io. In my case, the port is the same. Let's see what happens. And here, as you can see, we have net data as presented from my first Proxmox node. And if we take a look at some of the things that's being monitored here, if I scroll down, for example, we have QEMU related things, which, you know, makes sense considering that this is a virtualization server. And if I scroll down, I can go through the various metrics right here. And there's just a lot of information. I do have a lot of memory on this particular server. And again, well, it's a virtualization server, so that makes sense. But as I scroll down, you can see some of the metrics that NetData is keeping track of. And of course, there's other services that NetData can integrate with, including, but not limited to, Nginx, MySQL, and others. Anyway, as you can see here, anytime you install NetData on a server, then that particular server will have a dashboard installed that you can access via port 19999. To view a dashboard for a specific server, you just go to that server and go to the same port. Again, every server will have its own installation of NetData. Now, depending on how many servers you have that you maintain, you may not want to go to each server one by one in order to view their dashboards. If you manage hundreds of servers, for example, then that would probably mean having a hundred tabs open in your browser. And I don't know about you, but that's not really something that I want to do. So that's where the cloud version comes in, which is what we're going to look at in the next section. All right, so in this section, what we're going to do is talk about the cloud version of NetData. And at this point, you might be thinking that I'm about to pitch a cloud version that costs you, well, money, giving you reasons on why it's worth paying for. However, I'm not going to do that. Not only do I have no interest in selling you anything during this video, NetData Cloud is free anyway, and it's also optional. One of the main benefits of NetData Cloud is that it adds some additional features on top of NetData itself. So if you have multiple servers with NetData installed, then the biggest benefit is that NetData Cloud enables you to see the resource health for your entire infrastructure from one screen, rather than having to visit each one at a time. Another feature that's noteworthy within NetData Cloud is that it can detect performance anomalies. This feature uses machine learning to perform anomaly detection on each of the metrics that NetData collects. And in a nutshell, this means that NetData is able to understand what a normal baseline is for any server, and is able to detect things that go outside that baseline without you having to rely on that reminder in your email client that you keep snoozing. And you know who you are. Anyway, continuing on with features of NetData Cloud, you can also customize your dashboards as well. You can add spaces, war rooms, or even your own custom dashboards. And we're going to see those features in this section. If you want to follow along with me as we check out NetData Cloud, there's two ways you could do that. If you want to view a sandbox demo of NetData Cloud that you could use to play around with the dashboards, you could do that by visiting the URL that you see on the screen right now. And I'm also going to put that in the description down below. And what that'll do is bring you to a live demo so you don't even have to install it to play around with it. Also, you can follow along by setting up NetData Cloud on your infrastructure. In order to do that, an account with a service is required. Now, when it comes to the non-cloud version, there's no account or any kind of signup required. So the cloud version is going to be the feature that does require an account. But even with an account being required, the service is still free. So if having a central pane of glass that you could use to take a look at all of your servers is important to you, then this is the feature that's available for that purpose. Now, one of the prerequisites for the NetData Cloud version is that you'll need to have the NetData agent installed on any server you want to monitor with the service. Now, as part of the process of joining a server to the cloud version or your cloud account, you'll be provided with a command that will not only install the NetData agent, but will also register it to your cloud account. So it's up to you if you want to just go through and manually install NetData on your servers right now, or just use the join command. That's something you'll see very shortly. Before you do that though, I think this is a really good time to show you how to use one of the cloud specific features, the war room. 
A war room is a grouping of servers and you can create war rooms in whatever format you wish. Now the reason why I suggest looking at war rooms first is because it might make more sense to create the war rooms that you'll want to use so that way you can enroll your servers directly into the war room that they'll belong to. On my side I created a production war room and a staging war room. Production servers are the servers that I actually rely on while staging instances on my network are, well, basically test servers. They have a lower priority level, so I like to monitor those separately so as not to clutter up my list of important servers. That's just my naming convention for war rooms, but you can set up yours however you'd like. To create a war room, all you have to do is click right here where we have the plus icon, so I'll click on that. And what we'll do is give it a name. So what I'll do is create a quick test war room, as you see here. And for the description, what we could do is type something here that identifies the purpose of this room. So for example, I'll just create a quick description right there and then I'll click add. And just like that, we have a war room. And the first time you do this, you're not going to have any nodes, obviously, because we have yet to add one to this particular war room. So what we do have here is the actual join command that we can use to enroll a node into this war room. So what I'll do is click the copy icon right here to copy the command to my clipboard. What I'll do is connect to a CentOS server. Reason being, the footage PC is not something that I wanna monitor because it's not on all the time. It's only on when I want to record a video. So what I'll do is connect to another server and this is going to be a CentOS stream server. So I'll go ahead and connect. So let's get the installation process going. So I'll paste in the join command right here and I'll press enter. So it's installing net data just like we've done before. We do need the NetData agent for NetData to work, so that's why it's doing that first. So with that complete, what I'll do is start NetData. When we check the status of NetData, on this particular distribution, it's going to start as a stopped service. It is enabled, so if I restarted the server, it's going to go ahead and start NetData, but what I wanna do instead is start it right now. And if I check the status again, you can see that it's active and running. Anyway, let's go ahead and go back to our browser and we can see whether or not net data was detected in the cloud account. So what I'll do is click on nodes right here and check it out. Here's the CentOS instance right here that I've just installed net data onto. And setting it up was literally that easy. And as you can see, it's starting to collect metrics right now. So it's going to fill in with more and more information as NetData profiles the system. But as you can see, NetData was not only installed on that instance, it's showing up right here under my cloud account. That's pretty cool. If at any time in the future, you want to add additional nodes, you could click right here on nodes. And then we can click the add nodes button right here, which of course gives you the join command and the claim token. And we could copy this command and run it on another Linux server if we wanted to add additional nodes. You basically just work through the process of adding all the nodes that you want to add to this particular war room. And then after you do that, well, you're good to go. So now that we've not only set up a war room and we've added a node to that war room, what do we do from here? Well, at this point, what you could do is add additional nodes. You could create different war rooms if you want to categorize your nodes differently. And once you've run the join and install command for net data on each of the nodes that you want to use with this service, then they'll start showing up here in the cloud account. But what are the benefits of the cloud account aside from having everything show up in one dashboard? Well, let's explore that in the next section. All right, so in this section, let's go through additional features when it comes to the cloud version of net data. Now the first thing to understand, and I mentioned this earlier, is that NetData's cloud offering is free. And on the signup page, it mentions what the plans are in regard to that. NetData is clear that paid features are coming, but what you have available today, which is what you've seen in the video, is going to be free forever. Like I mentioned before, one of the benefits of the cloud account is being able to see each of your servers from one dashboard. 
And something to know about this is that while your server's metrics do pass through NetData's system, the metrics are not stored, but streamed. For this reason, there's no risk of information leaking unless you have a very weak password. Since your metrics aren't stored on NetData servers, there's no risk of anything leaking at all. Now, having a single dashboard isn't the only benefit when it comes to the cloud version. Perhaps even more important is the ability to receive alerts. In fact, some alerts are enabled by default, so don't be surprised if you notice that NetData is finding some things that might be potential pain points right away, and perhaps it's letting you know about it by sending you alerts already. But you also have control over how specific the alerts are by clicking the Alert Configurations tab. And that's going to be right here. And well, like I mentioned, take a look at this. I just installed NetData on the server and it's already found a few things to warn me about. For example, it's warning me about entropy and the system clock sync state. Those are things that I might not have considered to look at myself, so NetData is already finding value. But anyway, here on the Alerts Configuration tab, like I mentioned, what you could do is configure individual alerts. So if you have an alert that you want to adjust, what you could do is just scroll through this list right here. And there's going to be a ton of these. And what I'll do is just click on a random alert. I'll click on RAM available, for example. And as you can see, I could view more information regarding this alert. I can also edit the alert. And right here we have documentation that shows us exactly how to do that. And as you can see right here, you can edit an alert by adjusting configuration files. Normally you won't need to adjust configuration files because well, like I mentioned, NetData is an auto discovery service, so you shouldn't really have to do this. But if you want to fine tune an existing alert, you could do that by following the documentation right here. And here we can see some of the details for how this particular metric is measured. And also if I point at a specific time point when it comes to the graph right here, it's going to give me more specific information for that particular metric during that point in time, which is yet another thing that's really cool. But we can also create our own dashboards as well. So I'll close this one here and then I'll click on dashboards. And what I'll do is click the plus button right here to create a dashboard. I'll call it my custom dashboard just like that. And we have some information here that gives you some information regarding what a dashboard is and what you can use it for, but I think you get the idea. Let's just click the add button. And now we have my custom dashboard. So we can add a chart, for example, and I could choose a node right here. I only have one node in this war room, so I'll click on that. And what I could do is go through and add individual graphs. So what I'll do is just go through the list right here and then randomly select something to add. So I'll just add this meter right here, apps.cpu. I'll click on add. And then just like that, it shows up in my custom dashboard. And then I can repeat this for any metrics I wanna add to this dashboard. So again, I'll choose a random metric. I think this one will be good enough. And then I'll click add chart. And now I have two and you get the idea. We can add text. So I'll click on that. So I just added random text as you can see. So we have that here as well. So as you can see, you can customize your own dashboards and this might be very useful, especially if you have a client or if you're an MSP and you're hosting a particular business's account or server, that you could give them a custom dashboard with all of their information on it, making sure that they don't see anything that's not relevant to them, especially if you manage multiple clients. This is something that project managers really like to see. They like to see a, well, dashboard with everything that's relevant to the project. Now here, of course, I don't really have all that much to monitor because these metrics are fairly low, but you get the point. You could add whatever metrics you want, just like I've done here, to create your own custom dashboard. Let's take a look at what you could do with the options on each chart. There's a lot to unpack here. The ability to do this as well as filter the query and pivot the data without the need for a query language is really powerful once you get used to the UI. In a way, each chart can be thought of as a dashboard of its own. What I'll do right now is go over how to customize a chart, and while I do so, keep in mind that the options you have here enables you to create your own custom chart with all the data that's most important to you. 
To make it easier to see, I'll click on the Maximize button right here to enlarge the chart, and let's go through it. First, the Group By selection allows you to slice and dice the data in any way possible to instantly get different views of the same data set. For example, with this CPU graph here, I could use this to group the chart by nodes. As you can see, as soon as I did this, the chart automatically transformed into the desired type. Continuing, next, we have Instance Aggregation. When multiple instances need to be aggregated, this menu controls the function to be applied to produce the final output. Here we have Average, Sum, Minimum, and Maximum. Moving on, we also have Time Aggregation. When the visible has less points than the source data, NetData automatically applies an aggregation over time to reduce the number of points of visualization. NetData Charts uses something called the NIDL framework, which stands for Nodes, Instances, Dimensions, and Labels, to enable visibility into the chart across these variables to find the metaphorical needle in the haystack. There's a huge variety of time aggregation options, more than you could ever need. After that, we have Node. For each node contributing data to the query, NetData automatically tracks the number of instances and metrics queried, the volume contribution to the final chart, the combined anomaly rate, and their minimum, maximum, and average values. And the same goes for dimensions as well. Here, you can see the volume contribution to the final chart and the same values. When it comes to labels, labels are a very useful way to make charts more meaningful. And just like it did with nodes and instances, you can see the data that contributes to the chart across all available labels. You might also notice that some charts have a purple shaded area like you see right here. This is called the Anomaly Rate Ribbon and indicates if the data that you're looking at was detected to be anomalous compared to what happened in the past for this particular dimension or metric. The intensity of the purple color indicates points in time with a higher anomaly rate. And this is a neat little way to help you answer the question, is what I'm seeing right now normal or is something weird going on that I need to look into? At the bottom of the chart, you can see the legend showing dimension values, and if you look closely, there's a horizontal bar underneath every dimension that lights up in purple if that particular dimension is anomalous. And finally, there's a helpful popover when you hover over the chart that includes a histogram showing the distribution of the values across all presented dimensions and additional data points that might be of use. Like I said, there's a lot to unpack, but only because there's a ton of options you have here at your disposal. And well, there's our video. In this video, I gave you an overview of how to set up NetData. I showed you how to install it. I showed you how to view a local dashboard, connect your instance to the cloud account if you want to have everything under one single pane of glass. And I really hope this video helped you out. If it did, then please be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know that it helped you out. That might help this video find its way to someone else that might want to set up monitoring. I would really appreciate that. Anyway, in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.